Hello everyone, welcome to another one of my lead code videos. In this one, we'll do lead code 10, regular expression matching. So basically, we're given a string and a pattern, which we can think of as a regex. And we need to just return if the string matches the pattern, right? And then we have a few rules. So by default, the character A will match the character A, right? If we have a dot that matches any character, so this could be B, C, D, etc. And if we have a star, that means that there could be zero or more of this dot star in this string, right? So if we have a dot star D, this actually matches because, you know, dot star could just be taken for zero characters here and then A and D match, right? Or we could, this also matches where dot star could be just D, right? So if we have A, D, A, the dot star also matches these, right? So this is also a match. So what will be our approach to solve this problem, right? So basically, let's say if we're given this, the pattern and the string, right? What we'll try to do is we'll, we'll say, okay, if, if the characters match, right? Then we'll try to match the rest of the string, right? So plus one and plus one. And if they don't match, we'll basically say that they don't match at all, right? But then there's a special case of dot. So if we see a dot, then it, we consider it a match regardless, right? And then if we see a star after it, then we'll have two choices. We'll basically say, okay, either we will use up this character from the string and move on with the same position as the dot star, or we end the star here and then start, you know, if there was a, like A here, we start the next word uh, from there, right? And at the end, our goal is to get to the end. If we get to the end of both strings, then we know that we're done, right? So it's basically just going to try all possibilities. And then as we know, with those types of algorithms, that's expensive, right? Because it's going to be exponential time. So we're going to use a memoization technique where you know, given an index i in s and an index j in p, we will mem memoize what's the answer. Does the substring from the ith index of s to the end match the substring from the jth index of p to the end of p, right? So that will be our memoization. So let's go ahead and code that and hopefully things will be more clear. So let's first create our memoization uh, array. So we'll say boolean memo equals new boolean s dot length and p dot length right and then what we'll say is return is match s p zero zero memo right so this will represent like s and p the indexes that we want to check for in s and p and the memoization map right so this will be our recursive is match function where we'll take an s and all these other um, variables and so now let's start with our base case right so our base case is our s index is equal to s dot length that means we've reached the end of s and our p index is equal to p dot length that means we've reached the end of p right and if this is the case what you'll say is return true that means we finally found a match otherwise there's two things we're concerned about right so the first thing we're concerned about is, okay, do the characters match? And there's gonna be some more things here, but we'll write them as we go. So the first thing we'll be concerned about is do the characters match, right? So if the characters match, we'll have s.car at s index equal to p.car at p index, right? And the next thing we care about is, is the next one a star? Because if the next character is a star, then we have some more options there, right? So let's first capture that. It's the next one, a star. So here we have it. First, we make sure that we actually have a next character. So that's this one here. And then we check that if that character is equal to a star, then we know that the next one is star. So with this, let's just write down all our four possibilities, right? So we'll have if characters match and else, and within each of those, we'll have if the next one is a star and the else. And we'll have the same branch over here as well. All right, so first let's take care of the 
cases where the next one is not a star, right? So if the characters don't match and the next one is not a star, then we know that is match is going to be false, right? So let's initialize a boolean here is match. And I'm using final without assigning a variable. So that way we make sure that the compiler enforces it's only set once. And here at the end, what we'll do is memo at s pause p pause is equal to is match. Right, so in this branch is match is false because the characters don't match and the next one is not a star. So it's automatically not uh, is match false. If the characters don't match, right? So this one is by the way, characters don't match. So if the characters don't match and we have the next one is a star, that means we are forced to take the route where zero it's zero or more, right? So we are forced to take the route of zero. So we just have to remove this uh, this character and the next one, right? Because the characters don't match. So we can't pick, we can't have the or more portion of the star. We have to have it zero. We have to get rid of it. So basically in this bat branch, what we'll do is we'll recurse saying whether is match sp and we still haven't found a match for this current s index so we'll keep that index and for the p index we'll add two because we have to skip the next star and then move on to the next one right and obviously memo so that's this case where the characters don't match now if the characters match right and the next one is not a star so that's the simple case then what we'll have is our is match we'll just move our s and p both by one right because they both match and the next one is not a star, so we're all, we're good, right? Oh, and we forgot about the dot. So in the case of characters match, you know, either they can be equal or our p dot car at p index could be a dot, right? So even if it's a dot, then we consider it a match automatically, right? And so, if characters match, whether they exactly match or whether it's through the dot, and the next one is a star, then we have two choices, right? So our first choice is to just not take the star, right? Is to invoke the zero case where we say, okay, I know you're, you're presenting me with an option to take the star, but what if I just don't take it, right? Um, so that's option one. And option two is basically we do the same thing but we take the star. So we say, okay, I'm taking the dot star and I'll keep going, right? So I'll, so we keep the, the P index and we increment S index by one because we say, okay, is there still more that I can match with this dot star? So it's the, basically the or more case, right? So we don't move P because we still want to see if this dot star can match more characters in this case, right? And the other case, we move P and we keep S where it is saying, okay, we will invoke the zero case, right? Where we don't choose to match anything and we'll match it with the next one. Okay, so now with that done, there's just a few edge cases that we need to take into account. So the edge cases are basically what if, in this case, we're just checking if both reach the end, right? But what if one runs out before the other, right? Like these car ads will start failing, right? So let's examine those edge cases first. So the first case is if P runs out and S hasn't yet run out, right? So let's say we have the pattern is like A, B, C and S is A, B, C, D, E or something. And so if P runs out, but S hasn't run out yet, then then we basically know that, you know, we have to return false, right? So if if P index is greater than or equal to p dot length, then we know that we just return false because you know the pattern has run out, but s has not yet run out. If s had also run out, it would um, go here and it would return true. Now the other case where is let's say s runs out, right? So s as like a b c, and then we have p as you know a b c dot star dot star right that means s has run out but you still have extra things in p right so that means if s runs out but p doesn't run out we still have a hope but then our only hope is if the remaining 
characters are like dot star or something star, right? Because you can take each of these for zero characters, right? So then we'll just tweak this a little bit to say, okay, our characters match case, we'll say that S has to be less than S dot length, right? Because, you know, theoretically it's possible for S to run out, right? So in order to consider a ma it a match, obviously S has to be less than S dot length and you know, this condition, right? But, but this means that if S is finished, but P hasn't yet finished because we're past this, then we'll, we'll have characters match equals false. And we'll just fall into this case, right? And then we'll have to make sure that the next one is a star, which will just play nicely with this algorithm because then it will make sure that everything remaining is a star and it will just keep recursing with the same S index. Now, one more thing we need to do is obviously return here is match and obviously check for, for the memo before we go into all this, right? So if here we find that uh, memo at SPOS, PPOS is not null, right? It means we've already computed it, then we just return this one, right? Otherwise we're setting it over here and returning that so that way we don't we obviously have to memoize our results and then another thing is since now s can be equal to s dot length it can run out then this has to be plus one so that we have space for that position in the array right so yeah now let's try to run this and see how this does all right we're missing a return type let's just add that Missing a type here too. Oops, I'm supposed to be using S index and P index, not S pos and P pos. Same for this one. Let's try that. All right, there's some more issues here. I should be using the indexes. All right, now we've accepted it after dealing all the compilers, let's submit. Perfect, 100% solution. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.